40 hadith, an exposition, second revised edition, author Sayyid Ruhullah Musawi Khomeini. 35th hadith, God and man, good and evil. Arabic text, English translation. With my continuous chain of authorities reaching up to the pillar of Islam and Muslims Muhammad ibn Yaqub al-Kulayni from Muhammad ibn Yahya from Ahmad ibn Muhammad from Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Abi Nasr who said, Abu al-Hasan al rida said, God has said, O son of Adam, it is with my will that you are such a being that you will for yourself, whatever you will, and it is with my power that you carry out the duties I have prescribed for you, and it is with my bounty that you found the strength to disobey me. I made you hearing, seeing, and strong. Whatever good visits you is from God, and whatever evil strikes you is from your own self. That because I have a greater right to your virtues than yourself, and you are worthier of your vices than me, and hence I'm not asked concerning what I do, and they are asked. Exposition There are in this noble tradition certain sublime and important themes pertaining to the higher metaphysical science, which if mentioned with their elaborate preliminaries would take us beyond the scope of these pages and prolong this discourse inordinately. Hence, inevitably, taking a middle course, we will deal with them with brevity, mentioning in the course of a few sections some of these issues as established conclusions, and our trust is in God. Two Stations of Divine Names it should be known that there are two stations for the will, Mashiach, of God, the exalted, majestic is his glory, or rather for all the other names and attributes such as knowledge, life, power, and the rest of them. One of them is the station of the names and attributes of the essence, Asma wa Sifat ad It is established by metaphysical proofs that the sacred essence thought of the necessary being combines in itself all the perfections and all the names and attributes, and that in a single mode and from an aspect that is absolutely simple. All the perfections and the names and attributes of beauty and glory derive from its simple existential mode, and that which is beyond being is deficiency, defect, and non-existence. And as his sacred essence is pure being in absolute existence, it is pure and absolute perfection, Kamal as sirf wa sirf al Kamal. He is the totality of knowledge, the totality of power, and the totality of life. Arabic text. English translation. The other station is that of the names and attributes of the divine acts, Asma wa Sifat al Faliya. The plane of manifestation of the names and attributes of the essence, which is the plane of manifestation and the attributes of glory and beauty, and this is the station of Mayyat al Qayyumiya, contiguity of the sustainer and the sustained existence, referred to in the Quranic verse, Wahua ma'akum, aina ma'kuntum. He is with you wherever you may be, Surah 57, verse 4. Arabic text, English translation. Three conspire not secretly together, but he is the fourth of them. Neither five men, but he is the sixth of them. Neither fewer than that, ne neither more, but he is with them, wherever they may be. Surah 58, verse 7. And it is the plane of the face of Allah, wajallah. Fa'inama, tuwallaw fafama, wajhullah. Whithersoever you may turn to there is the face of God. Surah 2, verse 115. And it is the plane of the divine effulgence, Nuriyat. Allahu nur samawati wal arth. God is the light of the heavens and the earth. Surah 24, verse 35. And it is the plane of the absolute will, Mashiyat al mutallaqa وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah, And you will not without God's willing. Surah 81, verse 29. خَلَقَ اللَّهُ الْمَشِيَّةَ بِالنَّفْسِهَا ثُمَّ خَلَقَ الْأَشْيَاءَ بِالْمَشِيَّةَ God created all things with His will, and He created the will by itself. And there are still other terms and descriptions for it in the language of the people of God, and both of those planes are referred to in this noble verse of the Divine Scripture. He is the first and the last, the manifest and the hidden. Surah 57, verse 3. The plane of the absolute active will has an encompassment of sustainment, ahati, yaqayyumiyah, over all the existence of the realms of mulk and malakut, and all the existence are from one aspect its particular modifications, the an yunad, and from another aspect its manifestations, mazahir. 
It is in respect of the station of active will, mashiat al filia, and the manifesting character, mazhariyat, of the wills of the creatures and their dissolution, fana, in it, or rather the fact that the creatures themselves, with all their aspects manifest and reflect it, that the noble tradition says, O son of man, it is with my will that you are one who wills. Your being that and its perfections are by my will itself, and rather you yourself and your perfections are particular expressions, the ayunat of my will. وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَيْ And when you threwest, it was not you that threw, but God threw. Surah 8 verse 17 And there are so numerous statements and traditions and Quranic verses in support of this matter that their mention is not essential. The August Sheikh Al-Ishraq Suhrawardi considers God's detailed knowledge, ilm tafsili, of things as being the same as this plane of acts of knowledge and the muhaqqiq Khwaja Nasir al-Din al-Tusi has followed him in this opinion. Hazrat Sadr al-Mutahlihin considers God detailed knowledge to be the same as the plane of the simple divine essence to him. The statements of those two figures are not absolutely satisfying factory, but this author considers the opinions of each of them to imply essentially the same position. The disagreements between them being merely verbal, though an elucidation of this matter is not appropriate here. From this explanation, it is known that everything that comes into existence, whether they are the sacred substances of the divine realm or the natural substances of the realm of mulk or accidents, whether it is the essences or attributes or acts, all of them come into being with the sustainment, sway, and all-inclusiveness of the divine power. Hence, the meaning of the statement becomes clear. It is with my power that you carry out the obligations prescribed by me. Also, the station of the absolute will is the same as that of the all-encompassing mercy, rahma, and the all-inclusive bounteousness. Hence, he has said, And it is with my bounty that you obtain the strength to disobey me. An allusion to the topic of Jabr and Tafweed. There is a clear allusion in this noble tradition to the problem of Jabr and Tafweed, and it spells out the right creed in this regard, that of Amr Bain Al Amrain or Manzila Bain Al Manzilatain, which is in accordance with the way of the Nostalgia sticks in the path of the people, the heart. That is because it affirms both the divine will, Mashia, as well as the power and role of the creatures, which are moreover considered to derive from the divine will. It means to say, you exercise your will, and it is by my will that your will has been manifested. You carry out the duties and your power is a manifestation of my power, and it is with my bounty, which is the expansive table of my all-inclusive mercy, that your power to disobey was acquired. Hence, all the actions and attributes and existence that relate to you are not capable of absolute negation in relation to you, in the same way as these cannot be affirmed of you absolutely. You exercise your will, and your willing is subsumed in my will, and is its manifestation and a conditioned expression, ta'ayun, of it. It is with your own power that you have the capacity to obey or disobey me, and at the same time your power and strength are manifestations of my power. Thereafter, a likely objection that, on this basis, the defects, vices, and sins of creatures are to be attributed to God is dispelled by a metaphysical and discursive, as well as a mystical and Gnostic rejoinder that since God the exalted is pure perfection, goodness, beauty, and glory, everything that derives from his sacred quarter is perfection and goodness, rather the order of existence and the reality of being, the visible and the invisible, is concurrent with perfection, completion, and beauty, and that which is deficient, vicious, evil, and bad derives from non-existence and finitude, and is associated with essence, mahiya, which is not the object of creation, ja'al, and divine emanation. Rather, the evils present in the realm of nature and the narrow realm of mulk pertain to the contradictions between the existence and the narrowness of the world, and the contradictions between them are not the object of creation. Hence, all good, perfection, and virtue derives from God, and all deficiency, evil, and sin derives from the creatures, as stated in the Quranic verse, ma asabaka min hasanatin fa min Allahi wa ma asabaka min sayyat. And from in nafsik. Whatever of good befalls you, O man, it is from Allah, and whatever of ill befalls you, it is from yourself. Surah 4, verse 79. 
and all the felicities of the world and the hereafter and all the good pertaining to the realms of the Mulk and Malakut emanate from the mainspring of goodness and all the evil and wretchedness of this world and the hereafter derive from the essential deficiency and lack of the existence themselves and that which is commonly said that felicity and wretchedness do not derive from the creator's creation but from the essence's thought of things is without basis in relation to felicity sadat because felicity is the object of divine creation and emanation and felicity does not derive from any essence or quiddity rather sheer extinction and complete wretchedness derive from essence however it is correct to say that in relation to wretchedness shaqawa for it derives from essence mahiya and it is not the object of creation ghair ma'jul being lower than the plane of creation and as to the famous tradition as sa'id sa'id fi batni ummihi wa shaqiyyi shaqiyyi fi batni ummihi the felicious one is felicious in his mother's womb and the wretched one is wretched in his mother's womb it is a different meaning relating to the sciences of the names and the attributes and its mention is not even relevant here and as following the explanation of this truth based on metaphysical proof there remained the likelihood of a doubt that the negation of any role for the existence in relation to all that is good and the negation of the evils in relation to the eternal and necessary power of god implies jabr and tafwid which are contrary to established truth in accordance with the way of the gnosis and the path of metaphysical reasoning it was met with a statement clothed in the language of the previous metaphysical argument and one which substantiates it that God the exalted is worthier than the creatures in regard to the attribution of virtues and that they are worthier than the sacred divine essence in relation to the attribution of vices in this affirmation there is affirmation of worthiness of ascription in relation to each of the two sides as to god's being worthier than the creatures in relation to all that is good and the principle of its attribution to the creatures that is because the relation of good to the source of all sources is the relation of existence wujud and intrinsic bi'adat because good is intrinsic in existence being identical with the essence and the necessary being and in the contingent through creation ja'al and emanation ifada and the emanating principles of good derives from the necessary existent the exalted and the contingent is the mirror for its manifestation and its manifester muzhir and that relation of active manifestation zahiriyat and emanation is more complete than this relation of receptivity and passive manifestation mazahriyat however this case is the reverse in respect of evils and vices but each of the two relations stands affirmed that is because that which is emanated by god is good and this good is accompanied with associating evils in a subordinate manner and they are attributable to him accidentally be al arad and attributable and essential to the deficiency and in advocacy of essences mahiyat Accordingly these two points of view are also mentioned in the noble verses there where the sovereignty of unity prevails and overshadows plurality and deficiency he says kul kullun min indallah say o muhammad everything is from god surah 4 verse 78 and there were the intervention of accidental pluralities taken into account and the mediating means are considered he declares ma asabaka min hasanatin fa min allah wa ma asabaka min sayyi'atin fa min nafsak whatever of good befalls you o man it is from allah and whatever of ill befalls you it is from yourself surah 4 verse 79 god the exalted is not answerable concerning what he does and other existences are answerable it should be known that the authorities amongst the philosophers say that there is no end or purpose for the divine act except the sacred essence and its essential manifestations and that it is not possible for the sacred essence to have any end for the creation of things beyond itself and its manifestation that is because every agent that creates something for an end beyond its essence whatever that may be even if it is for procuring a benefit for itself or bestowing a reward on another than itself or for worship or knowledge ma'rifa praise and glorification needs it for its own perfection and its existence is preferable to it over its non-existence and this implies deficiency 
in adequacy and deriving benefit from something else. This is impossible for the absolutely perfect divine essence, which is self-sufficient and necessary in all respects. Hence, there is no theological ground nor a question of wherefore in his actions, and he is not asked concerning what he does. However, other existence have ends and purposes in their acts that lie beyond their essence. Thus, the end of the acts of the lovers of divine beauty and those blessed with nearness, muqarrabin, and extinction in the divine majdubin is reaching the door of Allah, encounter with the divine liqa Allah, and reaching the threshold of divine sanctity. And so do other beings have ends additional to their essences in accordance with their perfection and deficiency, intensity and weakness. Also, that which is absolute perfection and necessary in itself is necessary in all respects, and in the same way that his sacred essence is devoid of theological grounds, his actions too are devoid of any theological grounds beyond the essence contrary to all other existence. Similarly, since his sacred essence is ultimate beauty and perfection, it is the Kaaba of aspiration of all existence and the ultimate end of the entire chain of being. But the Kaaba of aspiration and the ultimate end does not have an end beyond itself, as other existence are essentially deficient, and every deficient thing is by nature the object of repulsion. In the same way that every perfect thing is the object of attraction and pursuit, hence the end of all movements and actions is the sacred essence, and for the sacred essence itself there is no end beyond itself. لا يسألوا عما يفعل وهم يسألون. He's not asked concerning what he does, and they are asked. Surah 22, verse 23. Also, since the sacred essence is ultimate beauty and perfection. The order of existence, which is the shadow of the beautiful essence, is utmost perfection, and the universal order is the most perfect of all conceivable orders. Hence, the question concerning theology and purpose and benefit arises due to ignorance and deficiency. Accordingly, the accursed Iblis put the well-known sevenfold questions in God. The exalted answered all of them, concisely and in the manner of the fair disputation with a single answer. Hence, God is not to be questioned concerning his actions due to his ultimate perfection. And other existence are liable to question due to their deficiency in his essence as well as actions. Also, since God the Exalted is absolute wisdom, each of the actions that derive from Him possesses ultimate soundness and so is unquestionably contrary those of other existence. Similarly, since every act of God the Exalted derives from the reality of His essence and the very truth and absoluteness of His being and other existence are not such, therefore He's agent by essence and a question concerning His ends is invalid contrary to the case of other existence. And since his will and power are the same as his sacred essence, efficiency by essence in that sacred essence is the same as efficiency by will and power. And there is no room for any objection relating to efficiency by nature. This is one of the noble topics that is established in its own place, and through it are resolved many of the doubts posed by the theologians concerning very topics relating to the divine sciences. From this explanation, we come to know the causal interrelation between the sentences of this noble tradition. Thus, since divine actions are consummate perfection and perfect order, he is not questioned concerning what he does, and others are questioned because they are not such. This is the cause for his being worthier of virtues and the creatures being worthier in relation to the attributability of vices. And this is the cause for the attribution of every vice to the creature and every virtue to God. This relationship can also be established by other explanations which were not mentioned here. And to Allah belongs all praise at every beginning and end. End of 35th Hadith God and man, good and evil.